Welcome to this VR scans demonstration. In this video, we'll take a closer look at the VR scans technology together with the VR scans material library. We're going to cover the VR scans material features as well as simple step by step workflow of how we can use the VR scans material in our project. Let's take a look at some of the key features of the VR scans. A VR scans material is generated by capturing thousands of images of a real life material sample. The resulted scanned material is often indistinguishable from the original sample, which makes it appear photorealistic. The amount of photographs generated by the high quality hardware captures the material's texture in exceptional quality and detail. Using all this physical data, the VR scans technology captures the material's bidirectional texture function, or BTF. This approach is far more advanced and accurate than a single point bidirectional reflectance distribution function, also known as BRDF. As a result, VR scans recreate a material's true surface appearance and unique response to light. To recreate a material as physically accurate as possible from the ground up, you need to build a complex shading network, which could be daunting and time consuming. VR scans require no prior material building knowledge or use of any reference materials. Setting up a VR scans material is as easy as just drag and drop. On top of that, a scanned material is seamlessly tileable, which means you won't get any seams or repeating patterns when you tile the material over the surface. The VR scans materials can be fine tuned further in terms of appearance directly in 3ds Max or Maya. You can alter the color of the original scanned material to suit the needs of your scene. Also, you can paint on top of the color or texture without losing the material's properties or affecting the reflection color. You can adjust parameters such as UV tiling and bump strength. And you can use VR scans materials with V-Ray materials as well. The VR Scans Material plugin is part of V-Ray version 3.5 or higher, which provides the user interface for importing, modifying and using the VR Scans Materials in V-Ray for 3ds Max and V-Ray for Maya. There is no need for additional installation. Once you purchase a license for the VR Scans plugin, you automatically receive a one-year subscription for the VR Scans library. In short, the VR Scans Materials are more than just texture maps. They capture the material's physical properties and light behavior under different lighting angles. All of this is packed into a single material file that could be drag and drop onto any geometry in your scene. This approach provides incredibly fast workflow when it comes to shading your scene. Let's get started by downloading a few materials from the VR Scans library. The VR Scans Material Library is a repository of pre scanned materials created by Chaos Group with the VR Scans hardware. The library contains a large quantity of materials, currently around 550, and it's still growing. There are different types of materials broken into categories, such as car paint, plastic, wood, leather, metal, and so on. The library is accessible to all VR Scans license holders, and also with the extended 90 day trial, you can use the VR Scans plugin along with access to the library. To access the VR Scans material library, you need to click on the Downloads button located at the top right corner on chaosgroup.com webpage. Within the Downloads page, there are a couple of tabs to choose from Software and VR Scans. Simply click on the VR Scans tab. Once in the material library, you can browse and choose materials to download. On the left hand side, there are multiple filters to narrow down the selection of materials. You can filter by material type, material color, also by what is the material most suitable for. For example, automotive, interior design, product design and so on. Let's filter by material type and choose car paint. There is a list of all the car paint materials available for download in the library. Let's scroll down and choose one of the red car paints. Let's click on car paint red 1S for example. On the left hand side there is a thumbnail preview of the material, which I can click to expand. This way I can examine the material from closer proximity. 
If I'm happy with the look of the material, I can simply click on the download button and save it to my hard drive. Let's go back to the materials list and choose another category to filter by. Let's choose leather. There is a fine collection of leather materials to choose from. Let's select the leather beige material and download it. Following the same procedure, you can browse and download all the materials you need for your project. For the needs of this demonstration, I've downloaded a plastic, wood and a couple of fabrics materials. Let's make use of the materials I've just downloaded from the material library. In this scene, I have a car exterior. Let's make a test render. Currently, all the car parts have a grey V-Ray material assigned to them. Let's open the material editor and under the V-Ray tab of the material map browser, find the V-Ray scanned material and drag it onto the canvas. The first thing that needs to be done is to load the material into the V-Ray scanned material node. Under the general rollout, there is a button to browse and load the material. Let's find the red car paint material I've downloaded earlier and load it. Right under the file loader, there is a button called Adjust UV Tiling to an object. The VR scans file contains information about the physical size of the scanned sample. By clicking on a point over a given object, the texture tiling is modified so that it matches the scale of the object. This is an automated UV tiling adjustment, but it can be manually controlled, which I'll show later on. To the left of the Adjust UV Tiling button, there is a checkbox to toggle the displaying of the UV borders of the material tile in the viewport. Also, a two-sided option to force the back-facing polygons to be shaded the same as the front ones. This option can be useful for objects like curtains. If the two-sided option is disabled, the back-facing polygons will appear black. And there is an option to disable transparency for materials that store such information. In situations when the transparency has little or no effect, this option can be used to speed up the rendering process. Under all those controls, there is an information box displaying some useful information contained in the VR scans file, such as the actual material sample size. Let's assign the material to the car's body and render out the scene to see what the car paint material looks like. Certain materials have a layer of clear coat, such as the car paint material that we have currently selected. In the clear coat rollout, there are several settings for tweaking its appearance. We can disable the clear coat of the material by simply unticking the enable checkbox. The highlights checkbox toggles the highlights from point light sources for the coat layer. The IOR value determines the index of refraction of the coat layer and based on that information, the strength of the reflections. A value of 1 disables the cold layer and doesn't produce any reflections. Higher values result in stronger clear cold reflections. The VR scans file typically contains the correct value for this parameter and it's automatically set when the material is loaded. Finally, the bump multiplier controls the strength of the cold layer bump. The cold layer has a built-in bump map stored in the VR scans material file. Let's tweak the bump multiplier and re-render a region of the image to see the difference. Tweaking the bump multiplier is most noticeable in the reflections of the material. Also, let's disable the clear coat entirely and re-render the image again. Using the same approach, let's assign a VR scans material to the tire and the rim. For the tire, I'm going to use the rubber material I've downloaded earlier, and for the rim, one of the brushed metal materials. Once we set all the materials, let's render out the image to see what it looks like. Usually the car tires have some information written on the site, such as the brand, the size of the tire and so on. Since VR scans materials work perfectly well with V-Ray materials, we can use the V-Ray bump material together with the VR scans rubber material to create the desired effect. Let's create a V-Ray bump material and plug in the bump map into it.
Next, let's plug in the VR scan's rubber material as the base material. Finally, we can adjust the bump amount as needed. Let's assign the material to the tire and re-render the image to see the result. Let's draw a region around the point of interest, in this case just around the tire for the sake of speeding up the rendering process. As you can see using the V-Ray bump material, we have successfully added details on the side of the tire. Let's open up a scene containing a part of the car's interior so we can examine another set of VR scans materials such as leather and plastics. Using the same approach as shown before, I've created several VR scans material nodes and loaded a leather, plastic, wood and a couple of different metal materials. Let's render the scene to see the result. As mentioned earlier, the VR scans materials give a certain amount of flexibility and control over some of the material properties. For instance, I can easily change the color of the leather material or the plastic material. Let's select the leather material and under the appearance rollout you can notice several controls. The filter color can be used to tint the material. Tinting the material would affect the color of the reflections as well. Paint color option can be used to change the color of the material without losing the texture or changing the reflection color. With the last two controls we can change the gamma of the material or the saturation for further artistic freedom. Let's change the color of the leather material to dark red and re-render the scene. We can easily try out different colors and shades until we find one that suits our scene needs best. Let's take a look at the rest of the VR scans material options. In the advanced rollout, we can tweak the subdivisions which control how many reflection rays will be traced for the material. We can also tweak the trace depth which controls the number of reflection bounces. On top of that, there are controls for the cutoff threshold, for the color space and some more. For all of those settings, you can find more in-depth information in the VR scans documentation at docs.chaosgroup.com. Finally, the plastic buttons and knobs supposed to have illuminated labels on top of them. This can be easily achieved by using a V-Ray blend material, blending V-Ray light material and the VR scans plastic material. Let's create a V-Ray blend material and plug the plastic material as a base. In the coat layer, Let's plug a V-Ray light material with a color and intensity as desired. We can also use a texture if we'd like. Finally, in the blend amount, we can plug in a black and white texture to serve as a mask. Let's reassign the newly created blend material to the geometry. We can do the same for the knobs and for the remote control. Once we are ready, let's render the image and examine the final result. Let's open a more appropriate scene to demonstrate some fabrics materials. In this scene there is a close shot of a shirt. The VR scans material is set up exactly as the prior ones. Since fabrics have more pronounced texture and color patterns, the automated UV tiling adjustment might not be what we are looking for. In the coordinates rollout we can manually set the UV tiling of the material using the 3ds Max standard coordinate settings. For getting the absolute maximum of a scanned material, it's recommended to use the adjust UV tiling functionality and to have a properly scaled scene geometry. Let's get started by selecting the adjust UV tiling and click on the shirt. This way we can get a measurement of the tiling and tweak it further from there. Let's render the scene to see what it looks like before we continue. The fabric pattern is a bit too large for my liking. Let's take a look at the coordinates rollout menu 
and manually override the UNV values to something like 20. Also, I'd like to rotate the pattern by 45 degrees in the counterclockwise direction. Let's adjust the W value to negative 45. After making those adjustments, let's render the scene once again to examine the results. In certain situations, you might find it useful to tweak the UV tiling rotation and offset of the materials manually. As of what to be expected in the development of the VR scans in the future, there are really exciting features already on the way. A support for render elements will be added. Also, there is going to be more control over displacement for materials using height maps. Geometry with bad UVs or no UVs would also be covered using triplanar mapping. The VR scans materials would be able to be rendered using the V-Ray GPU. On top of that, they would be added in the V-Ray for Rhino and V-Ray for SketchUp. Finally, the VR scans material library would continue to grow even bigger and more diverse. In this video, we went over the VR scans material plugin, the technology behind it, together with examples of materials from the VR scans material library. I hope you found this video useful and helpful. Please give us your feedback, comment, or share it. If you'd like to follow along the exercises in this tutorial, please download the scenes from the link provided in the video's description. Thank you for watching.